Mario, thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Uh, welcome to APAP. Thank I guess you. you should be you should be you <laughs> should be you. saying that to me. Welcome to APAP. There you go. Welcome to APAP. <laughs> Great. Um, so for anyone in the world, I know this is impossible to imagine. Right. It's unfathomable. Right. But for anyone out in the world who's watching this and sure. thinking, APAP, sure. what is APAP? Why is APAP? APAP. APAP is the Association of Performing Arts Presenters. We are a service organization for the presenting field, which is a field that brings artists to audiences in stages around the country and around the world. This is a huge trade show. Right. Now, when we were, before we were here, feeling very comfortable on camera together, <laughs> uh, we were talking about the size of this event. Yes. Could you give us some sense of the dimension, how many people, how many states, how many countries, that kind of thing? Absolutely. We have about 5,000 attendees. We have individuals from over 34 countries. And then surrounding APAP are 12 affiliated festivals that bring even more people from around the world. So we're probably around 10 to 12,000 people in max. And your job is to meet every single one of them, remember all of their names, and find out all the details of their entire lives. Do I have that? Do I have that right? I've already done that. <laughs> he's already done that. Can you believe he's already done that? That's why, my friend, they pay you the big bucks. I, that's why I'm sitting here thinking to myself, when I grow up, when I grow up, which will probably never happen, but I want to be, I want to be just like you. The I could. <laughs> um, so. Every year, uh, this event comes to the Hilton uh, here in New York City, and people talk about what's going on in the field of presenting. Yes. Artists are talking with artists and bookers and presenters. Presenters are speaking with presenters. Everybody in the industry speaking with everybody else in the industry. What are some of the headlines? Like, what are the big, you know, one or two or three um, thematic topics that everybody here is talking about? Absolutely. Well, one of the big issues that's been going on in the performing arts arts world and, and all the arts world is the fact that organizations need to connect, connect with their communities. It's not good enough for an organization just to present my art and be in their ivory tower. They have to connect with their communities. Many have been doing that for a long time, but a lot of them are just coming to that. But what's most important is that we're part of the larger world. So what's going on here at the conference? What are we talking about? We're talking about political change. What just happened in November? and what's going on in Europe, what's going on around the world. So that's very much in the minds of the arts administrators and arts professionals here and what we can do, what are the next steps. So you have just identified the elephant in the room, yes. as opposed to, unfortunately, the donkey, right? <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen, do you think? Uh, we're filming this uh, two weeks before the Orange Menace is inaugurated, um, and, um, you know, people are fearful. People are concerned. People have a right to be. Um, not that I would betray my own particular political uh, <laughs> points of view uh, doing this interview, but without putting you too much on the spot, what, sure. what do you think the field is looking at in terms of what political change will mean or could mean? Well, I think that the main question is, what is ahead? I don't think anyone knows what's ahead. I mean, uh, the president-elect, um, as you know, has been uh, holding a number of different positions on many different issues. So we don't know. Ultimately, it could mean a better case for the arts. Ultimately, it could mean elimination for federal funding. Ultimately, it could mean a redistribution of federal funding from the National Endowment for the Arts and spread it out to the states. So we don't know, and I think that's the major concern. What direction are we going to go? So far, we don't believe he's, uh, uh, President-elect Trump has taken an active stance against the National Endowment for the Arts. But we don't know. So that's the main concern. I think part of the concern, too, is not so much the president-elect, yes. but what the Congress might do, right? Mm -hmm. It's a Republican-controlled Congress. Yes. Uh, there are many members of both uh, the uh, uh, House of Representatives and the Senate who are on record as being opposed to federal funding for the arts. Certainly during the first term mm -hmm. of uh, President Obama, when you were uh, working at the National Endowment for the yes. Arts, there were a number of controversies. Yes. Um, for example, uh, President Obama, at the very bottom of the recession in his first term, um, uh, asked for and received from then a Democratic Congress right. an additional $50 million in special right. funding, mm -hmm. um, half of which went to the state arts agencies for right. redistribution, mm -hmm. and then half uh, went directly to the, to the field. Uh, do you think 
that the Republican-controlled Congress going here into 2017, do you think that the elimination of the National Endowment, which they have stated is one of their priorities, really is one of their priorities? Or do you think that they are malleable, convincible, persuadable to maybe not eliminate the agency or defund the agency? Well, uh, that's a great uh, set of questions. I don't know the answer to that. I know that um, the arts organizations have been more active in the past about making sure that politicians and people in, in power understand the power of the arts, not only uh, aesthetically, but also economically to communities. And I think that's had some traction. Um, but what we need to do as arts organizations is be prepared. So right now we're having discussions, what happens if scenario A happens? What happens if scenario B happens, C, D, et cetera, so that we can go into action immediately as soon as we see any direction developing. And so I know we're having active conversations, so we're not just sitting and waiting.